And I think now it is time to pass the floor to Andre, Andre Chien, who has uh, for the past 15 years uh, often come and spoken to us. And for the first time in 15 years, uh, he cannot be uh, physically here amongst us. So he is present uh, via uh, Zoom in uh, Beijing. Sir, you have the floor. Prime Minister. I would just like to say how pleased I am to be with you here today, albeit not physically. And I would like to talk about uh, the different things that are affecting our world, all of the dizzying changes that are going around. So as a speaker based in uh, Beijing, who hasn't left China in more than a year, I would like to talk about uh, what I see from my point of view. For those of us who were born in the 50s, things were easy, simple. There were two main post-war ideologies, capitalist democracy and Marxist communism. Both of them had their own, made sense in their own way. They had their partisans and their, uh, their philosophers. And uh, since that was all that was available, you chose sides, one or the other. There were different iterations, but each one uh, was based on a pillar that each one thought, thought um, uh, immutable, uh, 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 an ideological and uh, national pillar. And so the... the there was a confrontation between those two ideologies in the second half of the 20th century. And so we basically had a Western ideology uh, versus uh, a communist ideology. And the future seemed very bright uh, when the, at the dawn of the 21st century and the United States seemed to come out ahead as a, su a military superpower we were getting, to, we were also, uh, it was at the forefront of technological advances as well. And China was quietly sitting in the corner and people started talking about it or noticing China. Yes, it's, although uh, communist China was based on Marxist principles, it had most, uh, observers didn't recognize that ideology and it was thought for a while that China would actually uh, fall into line and follow uh, the um, a dem would eventually become a democratic uh, country and uh, thanks to the impetus partly of uh, Bill Clinton China joined the World Trade Organization And that event is more than a way of uh, helping our economic, economic interests, but it's the best way of having exchange with China since Nixon's visit to China in the early 70s. In this current uh, climate of confrontation, people forgot some important things, but we were sort of in a honeymoon period at the beginning of the century. The Chinese army was uh, profoundly affected by the U.S. presence in the first Gulf War, and it learned a lesson from that. And uh, the uh, almost 10 years of conflict between uh, Iraq in, in the area of Iraq and Iran. So the honeymoon period during that started during Clinton continued a bit during uh, uh, George Bush, uh, George W. Bush. But George W. Bush's uh, term actually, uh, the relations with China in the beginning of the term actually started 
uh, had a difficult beginning when a spine, a, a spy plane, an American spine plane, was uh, discovered off the coast of China. And this caused a diplomatic crisis. But as Voltaire said, Zadig saw that the first month of a wedding is the uh, honeymoon and the second is reality. Then after that, uh, the subprime crisis hit. The United States has some of the best economists in the world, but they couldn't, they, they were overwhelmed by uh, a huge crisis that uh, flattened the world eco economy. This was an opportunity. Uh, and after there was a series of events that called into question the US model Many people questioned how you could have so many, uh, so much um, murder, how uh, a country could uh, elect a president like Trump, uh, how they could make the foreign policy could make the mistake of, uh, of the, the morass that is Afghanistan. And then the COVID crisis has also revealed a lot of things. It showed us the best and the worst of the United States. So we see that on the good side that uh, the vaccines could have been uh, the, the power of um, industry and research can put can can uh, create a vaccine in less than a year. But on the other hand, we've seen more than six hundred thousand uh, deaths, needless deaths. And we've seen uh, that uh, the Chinese economy was at a standstill, but for more, more than a year, China has managed to uh, deal with the COVID and get its economy back on track. So for more than, for decades, we could see that the United States had the best army, the best economy, and some of the best researchers, but wasn't able to uh, avoid a health crisis in 2020, for the first time in more than 100, life expectancy in the United States was lower than life, average life expectancy in China. So we also see the situation in Europe is more similar to the United States than it does in China, i.e. a good uh, healthcare system. Um, how did Europe react to this health crisis? Well, number one, denial. So people always talked about uh, the miserable situation in China, but uh, people were kind of taken aback with how uh, fast it came into, it, it rose to power. And so it was kind of a, uh, a difficult situation because on the one ha one hand it was nice to see how fast China reacted but it was uh, voted did not bode well for democracy this denial led the to China from hiding as the number of victims and we can't carry on like this and the only example is North Korea and we have seen the propagation of the epidemic and then we are contesting the reality of the economic problems by hiding the weaknesses but the facts are stubborn Europe needs more constricting measures to fight against the virus and the variants and we we don't want to question the uh, health pass in France. Maybe that is the first step towards the QR code in China that some people were uh, thinking about at the beginning was too strong. In France, we are starting to think about that. We can see that the influence in uh, the Western and the Chinese world are getting closer. This gap is now a huge uh, fault. And we have a difference between the uh, results and the wishes. And this is the first source of the dizzying changes in the Western world. What about emerging countries? Well, they've become the uh, battleground between China and the Western world. We have received 
uh, different information and Western countries are showing the lack of investments and the uh, political gaps because there are risks for beneficiary countries. And during the G7 meeting in June this year, Joe Biden in England uh, did promise billions of dollars for Africa to counterbalance the Chinese influence. This was all well said, but we can only wonder how he would have spoken if China, as early as 2013, had not launched its Silk Road program. And we can see that it is the only current developing program on the world stage. The US president would be more convincing if we didn't have Afghanistan in front of our eyes over the last 20 years. Uh, US presidents from both sides have promised to accompany the huge military effort by investments. The Taliban could have not won this success if those billions had been given not only to a ghost army, but to economic development in the country. Donald Trump was selfish and turned the selfishness into a virtue. So that was, of course, disturbing for its allies. Joe Biden has changed this by starting uh, saying America is back. Now, acts follow words, but what we can see is, is Joe Biden's America really very different to Trump's America? And who is going to guarantee that uh, Trump will not come back? And can we count on Western countries or European countries uh, to uh, counterbalance China? We see now that they are offering a third uh, shot of the vaccine to fight against the variants. I don't know if that's going to be efficient, but what is certain is that this policy is going to delay delivery of the vaccine to emerging countries that depend on international aid. Faced with those considerations, would it be not right for emerging countries to change their model and use the Chinese template? Uh, China thinks that it could be frightening for Europe. It's not possible because China does not have a template. This is a country that is looking for the truth but does not have any universalism. China is not a proselytic. It doesn't have messianic tendencies, but it does have policies that are adapted to its situation, its history and its culture. But if you're trying to copy China, it's impossible. You are misleading yourself if you think that you can follow that. We could not give lessons to the rest of the world, but China is demonstrating that it exited over two generations under development without external aid, despite the size and the population of the country. The leaders of emerging countries know that it is possible, but they will have to find their own path. And that is leading to dizzying changes again. So is China the only zone uh, away from those dizzying changes? We've seen COVID in China, the economy collapsed and bounced back. Then we saw the interference of Donald Trump and now we have a very strong economic trade from China. We have the exports from China to the US that have increased significantly this year. Uh, the Chinese app TikTok has been the most downloaded app ahead of Facebook. And we can see the Chinese in mass. So uh, what is going to happen? I think that it is a paradox that China does not understand, despite the success, uh, its reputation is collapsing rather than increasing. So this is a very difficult thing to understand for China. Is China going to shut down? I don't think so. Uh, as uh, uh, Mr. Abubanu said, if China is closing down, it won't be able uh, to move forward. So we need in China to have the external world. China was vulnerable and poor and it cannot do better now that it's rich uh, compared to America and the US is still seducing. So how can you have the sympathy of the world? This is also a difficult question, a dizzying question. Each region has different sources of dizziness. Can we have a therapy? Well, I doubt that there is a panacea, but maybe we could have Greek philosophy mixed with Chinese wisdom. 
know yourself in autumn and summer. And in China, we say the a vulgar man questions the other, but the smart man questions himself. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, cher André Chiang, pour uh, ce témoignage venu directement. Thank de you Chine. very much uh, for this uh, speech on China. We heard all your conviction here, but what I can see in the discussions is that in the end, we are going to lose a lot with the lockdown and with the impossibility for us to travel. We see that for companies, but we also uh, see it with humans, we can't see each other, we can't speak to each other, we can't talk to each other properly. And we have more distance from each other, from our partners. And we end up in this situation, especially with Asia, where a personal and um, flesh touching contacts that are key for diplomacy are disappearing. So we have a different group possibilities and propaganda uh, develop and we uh, no longer have the wisdom of human contacts that give us depth to our uh, relations and especially with the great people like the Chinese people. They are very sensitive. They understand nonverbal communication. They understand our attitude. Uh, somebody uh, who doesn't like the Chinese will easily be felt that way by the Chinese themselves. But if you don't have this expression, if we don't have this contact with each other, if we don't have those meetings, if we don't have opportunities to see each other and to talk to each other, distances become greater and can become dangerous. So in our exchanges today, we really tried uh, to identify some uh, pathways and clues to better understand the world. We've talked about lucidity, we talked about traps, we talked about the difficulties that we face, and we talked about the power struggles that uh, we heard about this morning. I would like to thank you all, first of all, because you took part to our forum, but I would like also to thank the panel members that talked one after the other throughout the day. I would like to thank Prime Minister Edouard Philippe for his presence, for the quality of his intervention, for the intensity that he brought to our meeting. Prime Minister, this will really remain a high point of our thinking today on the great challenges and the traps that we must avoid. As a conclusion, I would like to say that we are all going to carry forward the message that we heard throughout the day. Uh, we heard that cooperation can lead to peace and we need to look for this cooperation. And it is not easy when we are talking about promoting dialogue with some who are entities with which we are in conflict. So we don't always agree. So how can we live together? That doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to align ourselves to them. That doesn't mean necessarily that we are going to be on the other side, that we're going to be with the other one. But it means that we must be attentive. We must try to understand the other so that we can carry on living together. It's not new. Uh, Matteo Jitsui, who was a Jesuit who had gone to to China had really tried to understand China. And at the time he was accused by Franciscans in Rome to be too close to the Chinese, too close to the uh, literary lights, uh, to the point that he had lost a part of his personality. It is the Stockholm syndrome really that is mentioned and that uh, goes against dialogue. We need to try to understand because in our world, we have violence behind every door. We need to have attitudes that lead to dialogue rather than fights. 
this is what we want, of course, with your contribution and for uh, you participants and attendees, it's a very important. Thank you to all our speakers and to the foundation staff members, Olivier Casnav, Serge de Gallet, Elisa, and uh, all our uh, young team, Solène and the others who are with us. What I can tell you is that we are going uh, to remain loyal uh, to a coordination instead of confrontation we're going to give the floor to various people and regularly our foundation for perspective and innovation will have uh, this uh, loyalty to the Poitou uh, department uh, to the Futuroscope uh, to uh, René Monnery who was the founding member and creator of uh, this building so thank you very much and see you soon